Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Authors Republic tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about fixing the spacing at the rear of your tracks. So the first thing we want to do to fix this issue is open up our copy of Audacity, which is a free program. Once Audacity is open, you want to open where your files are stored and take that file and just drag it onto your timeline. So now that we have the file on the timeline, what you want to do, you want to look at the version of it that is the waveform for dB. So basically, dB or decibels is the difference between frequency and volume. Normally, when we're looking at anything, we look at the volume levels because that will show us the most amount of information that we care about for this track. So we're switching it over on this dropdown. You're going to notice everything expanded, got somewhat bigger. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click anywhere on this track. We're going to hit control on our keyboard and we're going to go up on our mouse scroll wheel. And that's going to zoom in on our track. After we've zoomed into our desired level, we're going to hit the K button on our keyboard as long as the track is selected. And what that will do is shortcut you to the very end of your audio track. So as you can see, we're at 444, which is the very end of our track here where you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of space here. So what our retailers ask for is between one to five seconds of silence at the end of the track. So what's between one and five? Three seconds. So what we usually do is with any leftover space here, we can just select it from here to here and we'll delete it right up to the audio. There. And with it still selected, you wanna go up to generate and then silence, since we're already working in this, we need to tell it how much we need. So we don't need any hours and we don't need any minutes, but we do want to add three seconds. So we'll just click here, type in three, zero, because there's a point mark right here and we don't want 3.8, we just want three seconds flat. And then we'll hit OK. And you'll see that that just expanded way out here. So using that same shortcut of control, we're going to scroll not up, but down. And by scrolling down, we've zoomed out far enough that we can see that we've added a bunch of silence here. And that's it. That's three seconds of absolute silence. And our retailers require between one and five. So you're right there. So once you finish making those modifications, what you want to do is you want to make sure you have the track fully selected. So just click anywhere over here. And you'll see that it highlights the entire track for you. Now go up to file. Down to export and export as MP3. If you're doing multiple tracks at a time, we recommend that you do export multiple instead of doing this by selecting one track at a time. That'll take way longer. So just use export multiple instead of export MP3 if you're doing more than one track. But since we're using only one track, we're just gonna do export MP3. So this is our track folder where we started off. We started with problem tracks, which is where we were originally. And we'll just go back one, and that's everything in there. And usually what we'll do here is we'll create a new file folder to put fixed tracks in. So in this case, we just named it fixed tracks and we're gonna select it and go into it. The next thing we're gonna do to further differentiate this file from the one that we started with is we're gonna rename it. So just go down to the end, put in a dash and we'll type in fixed. So now when we're looking at this versus the original file, we can tell, oh, this is the fixed version and not the broken version. For bit rate, though, you want to leave that as constant. That keeps your bit rate constant through the entirety of the file instead of it dipping down and up, which retailers don't want that. Leave that at 192 kilobits per second and in stereo. Now, as you can see, this file is only in mono, but even if we leave it at stereo, it doesn't turn it into a stereo file. It just maintains it as is, as a mono file. So we just go save. It exports our file at 192. And that's it. And if you go to compare where our original problem tracks were, you can pull the original problem track onto the timeline. It imports it. And if we hit K to jump down to the end again, since it's still within our window, let's zoom in a bit. Hit K on our keyboard. And you'll notice here, nothing here, three seconds of blank space, and you're all set. That's it for this Authors Republic tutorial, and we'll see you again in another one soon.